And this is Nemesis Insider. Insider? I barely know her. Oh, <laughs> oh God. Oh He's God. at it again. What's up, y'all? How you doing? How you doing? Are we having a good uh, holiday season? I hope so. Welcome to Nemesis Insider. Uh, it's been a little bit since we've been live, but now we're here on December 29th, 2022 with a very special episode. Uh, with me is the man who started it all, got us all here, got us all congregated, built us a nice little home away from home. Uh, everybody, give it up for Maz. Uh, it, and today is a special day for Maz as well. Do you, do you want to tell everybody what it is? Oh, it happens to be my birthday. I'm really old. Oh. Uh, how about that? So, yeah, it happens to be my birthday. We had an empty slot for the Insider for today, you know, about a month ago. And I said, you know what? Maybe it's destined for me to come on on my birthday. Most so, definitely. Most definitely. So I said, let's let's go ahead and do it. Let's uh, let's do the typical treatment, Maz. Tell us uh, how this all came to be. Tell tell us where you got interested in streaming. Oh, well, it's going to be a long story if you go that route. So um, I actually started competing in games. So that's kind of the start. I grew up in a household where my dad played Nintendo 64, but he only played like Mario and Star Wars. Uh, but my mom and my stepdad, they were big gamers. My mom, we played EverQuest growing up. I played Elder Scrolls, Daggerfall, and all that. So fast forward a little bit, Counter-Strike Source, I was addicted, hooked. I was competing in Counter-Strike Source for a while. Um, and then later on, I was competing on console with uh, Rainbow Six Vegas. I really enjoyed that game. I was really good at it. I ended up having the number one team in the U.S. on game battles for oh, wow. uh, Rainbow Six Vegas and uh, kept competing from there. So COD 4 uh, had multiple number one teams with uh, a former champion. Uh, well, he's uh, won Call of Duty World Championships twice since then, which is J-Cap, if Anybody that's watching is familiar with Call of Duty. Uh, but I started a um, a brand called uh, – well, I, I got offered ownership of Vanquish. So I was working for Denial. They won the world championship. I got somebody that was interested in me co-owning a brand called Vanquish Gaming. And so I went over there. We kind of turned things around. We had top eight teams in Halo and Gears of War and Rocket League, and uh, we were pretty much firing in all cylinders. Um, and then down the road, I got an offer to sell the brand or to, for somebody to buy it from me. And I shouldn't have agreed to it, but at the time, uh, it was a good offer, and I decided to do that. Um, so a couple years later, I was kicking myself because I was like still watching esports and stuff from the sideline. I still missed it. I wanted to be involved in it. And so I decided, you know what? Vanquish, I didn't build it. It was somebody else's. I came in as a co-owner, eventually bought it out, but I didn't, I've never built anything from the ground up, right? So I was like, you know what? I'm going to start my own brand. And so started Nemesis. Um, and then right after I started Nemesis, I, a couple months or two after, I brought Instill on to run the streaming side of things because he's a lot more familiar with the streaming side than I am. So, um, so I, I did start streaming back on Justin TV days, uh, but I didn't do it consistently. So that's one thing that I do regret. Uh, then I streamed again briefly around 2014, 2015. And, and then I just get caught up in the business side of things and I haven't regularly streamed since then, but uh, that's supposed to change. This is kind of the catalyst. I'm saying, hey, look, with this, this is like announcing my return, I guess, so to speak, to producing, to, to producing and creating content because uh, I miss it. Um, and I think I have a lot to offer in the area of my expertise in esports and in gaming. And I think I have, I still have some skills. So we'll see. Well, that's fantastic. I mean, do you like, honestly, th this is a perfect chance to ask you, do you like the business side or do you, do you feel like you'd, you know, thrive or just be happier doing like the streaming stuff? Like, no, here. I I'm, I enjoy the business side, actually. Um, the thing is, the landscape of esports and gaming has changed a lot in the last few years. So it's like a constant learning experience. And I know that people think of that in other businesses. Oh, well, it's changed. Well, 
esports specifically has blown up in the last few years, right? We went from kind of being a small time thing and game battles and there's some websites where you're competing in tournaments to going now you know there's franchises where you have to buy in for 25 million dollars and there's dota and league of legends tournaments that are over a 20 million dollar prize that stuff didn't exist when i was competing right like you were lucky to win ten thousand dollars to win if you won a championship yeah and you spent two or three thousand dollars just to get there you know what i mean so uh, it's <laughs> Um, that kind of money just didn't exist. And so that has made the the ecosystem in esports a lot different. Where before, you know, you had all these opens and any team could win, right? On any given Sunday, like somebody just shows up and they can beat the best teams out there and be the champion. Now it's all sectioned off, kind of like the NFL, where, hey, it's just set pro teams and you can't really break into that scene. So it's made the esports side of Nemesis and just in general for amateur uh, organizations um, to kind of break through uh, to become a, a larger organization. So it's a constant learning process where you have to pivot and say, okay, well, this part of the business is not viable anymore. So we have to figure out a different way to make it viable. And so we're fortunate enough to have some amazing content creators at Nemesis that we can now go into the more influencer focused side of things uh in 2023 so i really love that too there there's always that adaptation and i appreciate that so much about you um you know one thing we really haven't gotten to talk about especially uh as a nemesis insider uh part of this is the for honor team and how they want a you know huge championship and you know, uh, can you at least tell the viewers a little bit about For Honor and how the Nemesis relationship with that came about? Yeah, so it actually came up by chance. So a couple of years ago, uh, Clutch Meister, the captain of that For Honor team, reached out to us and just said, hey, like your brand looks pretty cool, <laughs> like the logo and everything. <laughs> and it's like, hey, would you by chance be looking into a For Honor team? And so kind of had some discussion and looked into it and uh, we were on the same page with what we wanted. So we kind of moved forward with that. Um, and yeah, they're the defending European champions and for honor. Um, now this past year has been kind of weird because um, two of our players for that for honor team are in Russia. And so Ubisoft kind of went ahead with their Quake Pro League, which we used to be involved in, banned the Russian players. So we kind of anticipated they were going to do the same um, with our players in for honor. So we haven't actually uh, really had any competitions this year uh, because of that, because we kind of, kind of, I wouldn't say it was a uh, straight up ban, but it's kind of a shadow ban, if you will, because we were like, hey, we know that they're probably not going to let our Russian players play. So we kind of have been sitting on the sidelines. Um, now, I know they're still at war with Ukraine and all that stuff, but um, we're hoping that things blow over, so to speak, to where they're not punishing the players, right? It's not their fault. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, so in these tough times, gaming is such a beautiful way for us all to connect and, you know, forget about the world's troubles. So it's kind of sad yeah. that, you know, these guys who are passionate about this game are having issues getting to play the game that makes them happy. So, you know, definitely wish them the best on that. And, you know, um, as far as Nemesis goes, uh, from esports, what what plans do you actually have to uh, expand past the esports category? <laughs> so I can't give you all the details because we're Darn. still mapping some <laughs> some of the plans, but I can kind of give you the summary of like what I envision Nemesis being. Right. Okay. So I envision Nemesis being all encompassing when it comes to gaming, not just influencers, not just esports, but like across the board content uh, educational content so teaching people how to be better at the games that they already play or maybe learn more about games that they want to get into or, or to play so full scope like i'm hoping that we can you know partner with the best character or content creators and you know character builds and mmos which we have dots uh, one of our members that's really good at that for instance and we have creators that are maybe good at first person shooters uh and you know, are educating people on how to be better at those types of games. And then we have people that are better at, you know, maybe RPGs or different types of games and genres um, to where people come to our content because they're learning something and they're getting better at the games that they want to play. 
uh, on the other side of it, I do want us to have a return to competition at some point to where we're competing at events, we're live, we're vlogging. Maybe a lot of us get to get together at these events or Twitch cons or uh, PAX, for instance, and just have a good time, vlog, um, spend some time together, build that camaraderie. Um, and then I do want us to expand in the gaming front from the streaming side as well. So obviously, we're trying to build up our uh, channel to where we have content every day of the week. So we're still kind of working the kinks out on that uh, to have everything consistent and have high quality content and hopefully every day eventually. Um, but in addition to that, um, I also want us to branch out into other things that we're not doing, right? Like I do have a passion for RPGs and MMOs, even though I competed in FPS. Um, and so I do want us to have like role play servers and stuff like that eventually that we can all, you know, um, play on together and stuff like that and more community events and tournaments and stuff that we can compete together, you know, just have fun. Um, and even I do want, I still want the house nemesis, which is kind of a placeholder name for our MMO stuff. Cause I do love MMO and I'd like to make a return to it, but it would be fun to have like the same group of people just like playing in all these MMOs together, maybe have an MMO night and uh, stuff like that. Because I think that's a, big area for me i grew up really loving the rpg and the mmo so i i really hate that we don't have like a sprawling guild or a presence in, in mmos that's good and i definitely love mmos as well i know we've talked uh back and forth about you know house nemesis type stuff and uh what we could do with that exactly and i'm i'm really excited to see if you know we can get an mmo thing together for sure uh Let's take a second, though, uh, to acknowledge our chat here and say hello to Hobbs, Ivy, Dan, you know, and it uh, looks like Crunk's here as well. Hi, Crunk. I hope uh, everybody's doing well. Thank you all for being here for this special episode of Nemesis Insider. We're so talking. Crunk's going to hop on for a, a one chip challenge, right? <laughs> <laughs> we are trying. I'm trying. You know, um, I, I think she's very, very clear on, on not wanting to, but, you know, <laughs> maybe we can get her to the nitro gummy. Maybe, maybe we can do that. <laughs> is there um, something that just, is there like, do they make something that just tastes absolutely horrible that you have to, it's like a challenge? We got. Besides um, like the Harry Potter jelly beans. <laughs> like, there has to be something that's just like disgusting. She wouldn't do the bean boozle too, I believe. There, there was like a <laughs> a no to that as well. She she's saying it in chat very clearly. We're we're gonna find some food challenge, and and have her join us. And uh, you know, let's let's go back to you a little bit here. I mean, again, thank you for uh, choosing to come here on your birthday. I know you. Uh, must have all kinds of plans and, and things you want to do with your uh, special day. Well, I thought about going to the Spurs Knicks game tonight, but then um, it's like, you know what? No, I'm going to come on here and, and do the podcast. And then I'm going to focus on trying to stream again, because if I keep procrastinating, I'm never going to do it. <laughs> so <laughs> That's always a fair point. I mean, once like even now with a, uh, the holiday breaks a lot of our streamers are just going to come back and and feel so drained and not sure what to do with themselves because of all the time off i know i've had a ton of time off here lately from it and it's tough to get back in but you've had what how how long of a hiatus from your last stream oh well for my last stream not that long i've streamed i'm sure i've streamed a couple times this year but streaming consistently it's been seven years wow okay so long time so what are your goals what, what what's your game plan for what you uh, want your streams to be well so i i do want it to be consistent so kind of have the same times but i'm not gonna no life it and do it like five to seven days a week I'll, I'll probably do it two to three days a week um and i do want to add some unique elements to it that i don't want to spoil just yet but um i wouldn't say they'd be regular streams they're definitely going to be more themed than, than just a regular hop on and, you know, play a game type of thing. Oh, that sounds exciting. So are you going to theme your streams around games if that's not giving away too much? Uh, possibly. That's kind of some of the idea is that, like, if I'm planning to do a playthrough, let's say, of Red Dead Redemption or something else, right? You know, maybe I'm decked out with some cowboy gear. <laughs> uh, if I'm playing, you know, Last of Us or something, you know, I'll 
<laughs> have some some interesting attire on. If I'm playing <laughs> Fallout, I'm gonna have to go all out with some Ooh. some interesting stuff. Um, so some of that I thought of before, but I got more inspiration uh, with Tony Noto, who was a member of Nemesis, because he he did that for uh, when he was playing Elder Scrolls. Oh, I remember, um, yeah. And so he would dress up for that, and I was like, man, I should be doing this. Why am I not doing this? So uh, that kind of got me like, man, there's so much more that I could be doing with the with the stream than just streaming. And so I kind of am more excited about that aspect of what other things can I do with the stream that's not just me playing the game? Like, how can I immerse people in it? So, Yeah, that's awesome. No, I don't plan to be like... Uh, Dr. Disrespect where he has a horse underneath him and it looks like he's riding the horse. <laughs> I don't know about all that, but maybe not that fancy, but... Do you but, at least got a cowboy yeah. accent for us if you're doing Red Dead? I don't even need an accent. So, uh, a <laughs> little known fact, my real voice is a con has a country accent. Oh. But uh, I took broadcast journalism and uh, the teacher told me it's better to not have an accent. Really? So I talk a little bit different, yeah. Wow, so like, you know, just uh, getting into character. Can you at least give us a sample of, of like some cowboy sayings in, in your own style here? Well, I'll tell you what. Yeah, I reckon I could give you a little bit of saying if I wanted to, but if I don't even have to try, I could just hop on a game and talk like this, just natural, <laughs> and play and ride some horses and shoot some things. It's beautiful. That's beautiful. Yeah, you, oh, Hobbs is is uh, just drawing a blank right now. He he's in disbelief of of the magic he just heard. <laughs> oh man, so <laughs> can't say what you're thinking. That's fair, Hobbs. Also, y'all, if you want to ask the birthday feller some questions, definitely uh, throw them up here. We're we're very very open tonight to uh, getting some stuff going, and uh, you know. Billy Ray Cyrus, is that you? Wow, that's a compliment right there. <laughs> uh, so um, let's get back to Nemesis here. Let, let, let's get it from the main source. This is a good education. You were going to say, let me get it from the horse's mouth. I, I wanted to. I felt it wasn't appropriate, but you said it, so it works out. <laughs> oh, law <Lord>, the vapors. <laughs> Yo, base, welcome in. <laughs> they are really loving this accent, by the way. You, you, you really, uh, you've re really projected yourself onto the audience here. <laughs> okay, okay. Nemesis education. I asked uh, Crunk the same type of questions. So for you. As the man who uh, runs it all, the man who owns it all, let's uh, let, let's get it straight from you. When it comes to a streamer that wants to be on the main team, what do you look for? Ooh, that's a loaded question. Okay, <laughs> so uh, when I'm looking for somebody from the main team, the criteria has changed a little bit, right? So in the past, it was basically. Three things, and Crunk pretty much laid it out there. So quality is the first thing, right? The quality of content. Not just somebody that's hopping on a game and just playing a game and they never look at their chat, right? So, you know, decent lighting, decent camera, uh, quality content. Maybe you're funny. Maybe you're good at the game. You have something, you know, that has people wanting more. Um, secondly, viewership is important to a certain extent, right? Because it has to be consistent. Um and you have to stream consistently. That's probably the most important. If you're streaming consistently and not, you know, yo-yoing. So like you're not streaming for three months and then you stream like 10 days in a month and then you stream every day for a month and then you don't stream for three months. Like that's consistency is important because if we're going to be building a team and we're promoting like, hey, we always have people streaming on our channel and this and this. And you go, you know, on hi hiatus all the time, it's probably not going to be a, a good fit. Um, but for me, I'm kind of sectioning it off a little bit too, is because I want us to be more thorough with how we're recruiting. So not just looking at the quality, the stream, um, the consistency, but also what genre are they streaming? What are their, if they have a main game, what are they streaming? Because as we expand Nemesis, we, we don't want to have 
too many streamers stepping on each other's toes, right? Like you want to have enough people where there's some camaraderie and there's some, some fun to be had. Like if we, you know, we, let's say we recruited five dead by daylight streamers, right? Which we've done but in the past. And that's probably not a bad number, but if we have 20 people playing dead by daylight, then we're splitting our viewership across those 20 people, right? So you have to find a sweet spot and you say, hey, we want to be involved in this genre and this game. So horror or, you know, or this particular game, but we also don't want to oversaturate our team with those streamers because then you're dividing your viewership. So let's say we don't have anybody playing these other horror games, then we might lean towards somebody that's doing something different in the future. Um, because eventually I can see it where we kind of have like a handful of creators that are the face of Nemesis Dead by Daylight or Nemesis Valorant or Nemesis League of Legends, just, you know, to name a few games um, where those are the go to's for that. And we don't recruit any more people that main those specific games on purpose because we want to highlight them in that particular game. So um, that's going to take some some very we're gonna have to take a very hard look of how we want to do that right because we don't want to turn away good talent um so it's gonna there's gonna be a lot of balancing with that because yeah if, if the right influencer comes knocking and they happen to be maining one of those games you know that's a discussion that's gonna have to be had um but we're not going to actively seek out people in a game that or a genre that we might already be oversaturated in so it'll be more uh just a little more fine tune of a team is where like, hey, we have creators in all different genres, all different games, not just, hey, we have FPS and we have horror, you know? Yeah. Because that's kind of where we're at right now. We have variety, FPS, and horror, but I want to expand that a lot further beyond that. So um, what are some basics that you think uh, someone who can be on the nemesis like if they, if they want to move up in the organization what are some must-haves or do's they need as a staff member or an, a content creator as a content creator so. like if they're coming up from community how do they get to the next level what, what i what think are the, some advice you'd give them i think the biggest thing is consistency um for that right so be consistent uh secondly is engage with other creators build a network um, you know, preferably within Nemesis, because if we see that you're interacting and supporting and engaging with other creators, we're more likely to reach out to you to move up to, on the team. If you're somebody that's on the community team, but you're switching back and forth between other stream teams, I was going to name a couple, but I'm not going to do that. But if you're if you're one of those that's collecting stream teams like NASCAR stickers, you know what I mean? Like those things, we notice it, right? Like we. I'm not trying to say like people have to be exclusive to Nemesis, but the way that I see it, if, if you're not investing fully into something, then we're going to pick up on that. And so will the other teams, right? Like um, I'm not saying you have to be right or die, but kind of, you have to be right or die. <laughs> <laughs> it's just like, you, you, it's not like you're putting all of your eggs in one basket per se. It's like, look, I care about this brand. I want to be a part of this particular brand. So I'm going to put my effort towards this brand. When you're, you know, signing up for this stream team and this stream team and this stream team, and we're just one of those stream teams, yeah, that stuff gets lost in translation because you're basically saying, I don't care which team I work with, like I don't have any loyalty to any of these brands, right? Like, and so that can be viewed in a in a negative way. Uh, and I get it; some people are just looking for the the fastest route to success, and that's okay. Like I totally understand it, but usually you'll find more success if you focus on one and just go for it, you know? So we'll know, we'll pick up on that. Like the people that are actually trying to move up in nemesis and engage with our creators and, you know, participate in a subtweet and, you know, message us in discord and they're in, you know, groups ch or in chats and stuff like that. We notice it. So just be active, be, um, I would say be genuine. Like we'll pick up on that. Most definitely. And I'm seeing a, a little bit of a topic here. That's, that's really great. And for uh, you to answer as well, Maz in the chat is that they're talking about consistency. Now you've mentioned it yourself. What does that mean? Like 
most people are, are starting to think. In okay. So consistency yeah. to me, there's, there's two ways to look at it, right? Yeah. So consistency over time. So we, we generally look at it on a three month scale. So how many hours did you stream within those three months? How many days did you stream within those three months? What do your concurrence look like for those three months? Right? So we try to see how consistent you were. Now, when I talk about consistency, not just on the streaming aspect, I mean not just hopping on on a random night and saying, hey, I'm going live in five minutes. I mean like, hey, you actually have a schedule. Yeah. So, hey, Monday, Wednesday, Friday, at this time, I'm going live. And you're consistent with it because it's very hard to build that type of viewership if you're not consistent. Like if – if you just decide one day you're going to get on at two in the morning and stream and then another night you're on at six at night and another day you're on at two in the afternoon, it's really hard to build consistent viewership that way. You need, you want it to be like where somebody, let's say somebody is eating, they eat dinner at seven o'clock every night. Right. And at seven o'clock, you know what, while they're eating, maybe they don't have time to watch a whole movie, but they'll pop into somebody's stream. Yeah. Well, if you're that person that hops on at seven o'clock every night, then you're going to be the person that they tune into. But if they go to your channel, oh, they're not live today. Oh, they're not live today. Oh, they're not live today because they don't know what your schedule is. You know what I mean? You're not going to maintain that viewership. But if they know, hey, every Wednesday, seven o'clock, James is going live. Well, seven o'clock on Wednesday, guess who's going to be in your chat? So that's what I mean with consistency is actually – Consistent to the point where you have a schedule, yeah. not just, ah, maybe I'll stream this week. And when I go live five minutes before I go live, I'm posting on Twitter. That's not consistent to me. That's still treating streaming casually. I totally agree with that. Um, the one thing too, is that some of our uh, viewers here are part of the community team. They do great. They show up every Friday for a game session with each other. They collaborate. We've actually gotten off on a great foot with uh, Fallout 76. There's a lot of uh, people within Nemesis that are actually really enjoying the game again. There's so much good content for them to get I into. I have Fallout 76. I've never played it. We need to get you into it. <laughs> I have two versions of the Steelbook up there, and I, I haven't played it. <sighs> two versions of the Steelbook? What? I didn't even yeah, know had, there was... They had two versions. What? Is it like a UK uh, version variant? or? Uh, I'm not sure. I'm not sure, to be honest. Oh, I yeah. just collect still books, so I see one and I'm like, <laughs> got it. Yeah, yeah. You are definitely invited to uh, join us on uh, Fridays for uh, Fallout Friday. It's a great tradition. Uh, you know, maybe one day eventually we can uh, post it up on uh, the, the channel here, have everybody come in and see what it is about. I wear a vault suit. I look really silly, but uh, yeah, it's a fun time. Everybody's dressed up. You, and Where's your pit boy? <laughs> I... I cannot find one yet. I'm getting one custom made, but it's going to be like three to six months out. <laughs> oh, wow. That's a long time. Yeah, they're they're going to custom fit it to my current phone. That way I can like pull up the app and they have like an actual integrated uh, UI they can put on the phone as well. So it's going to be really Well, then cool. you're stuck with the same phone for a while. <laughs> oh, it, it's never going to leave that pit boy once it's in there. <laughs> oh, you're like, oh, yeah. Yeah. You're like, I'm getting a second phone just for the, just for regular use. Oh, most definitely. Most definitely. <laughs> so, um, we got that out of the way. They, these, uh, community members, they know a little bit more of what to look for, what to get. Um, you know, is it, is it something we can talk about where we can ask like, what are the benefits of being on the main team? Can you can you answer that for everyone? That's a good question. So uh, I'm just going to strip it bare and just say, to be honest, the uh, we're restructuring all that. Like the, the perks, when people initially joined Nemesis were, we had a lot of perks. Like we had a lot of good things going for us. We had a lot of partnerships and companies that we worked with for discounts or free products and this and this. You know, some of those have come and gone. Back in the day, we even had a uh, keyboard or we had uh, peripheral care packages from Asus. Uh, people say Asus. I used to say Asus, but it's actually Asus. Uh, but other companies that we worked with that we're getting free product and gear and stuff for our creators. Um, along the way with our esports endeavors, um, some of that came and went and 
And just to be like completely transparent, we've been lackluster of the la since the pandemic started, right? Like our opportunities for live events with esports teams kind of dwindled because we there were a lack of events. And then it just didn't make a whole lot of sense to still invest in esports at that time. Um, but the issue is, is we invested a lot of our effort into the and money and time into those esports teams because we wanted to have vlogs at the events and we wanted to have them in our merchandise and jerseys and we wanted photography and all of this stuff. So it kind of threw everything on its head. Um, but we're actually restructuring um, the perks. So. I don't have a good answer for that right this second, but I can say that um, uh, some of you may know, we have a tiered system. We have our pro team, we have the main team, we have the community team. Um, what we're gonna be doing going forward is my hope is, my plan is that our existing creators on the pro team, um, we're pending, we have a lot of dis discussions and talks. I plan on meeting with each one of them one-on-one. -on -one. Kind of figure out what you know what they want going forward and, and whatnot but my vision is this let's say if if we had nobody on nemesis right now my whole plan is when we bring somebody onto nemesis onto the pro team it should be a big deal and it should be where we're sending maybe sending them a care package decked out with nemesis stuff take photos we get articles and stuff prepared with our pr and then when we announce it we announce it you know, and they're in their gear and, you know, we kind of make a spectacle of it. It should be a much bigger deal than just posting a graphic on social media, in my opinion. Yeah. So, like, I want it to be kind of like an exclusive thing where it's like, hey, Nemesis is decking you out with all the stuff, maybe some personal gifts from conversations that we might have had prior. So, like, let's say, I, you know, I had met you years back and and you said, oh, blah, 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 I'm into Fallout and whatever. And we decided to bring you onto the pro team. And maybe I sent you a pit boy or something. Oh, wow. Like, I want it to be more personal like that. And, you know, Is going that still forward. on the table? <laughs> <laughs> well, we'll talk about that. <laughs> so, um, but stuff like that, because I think that is what's going to build, uh, that's what's going to build value between Nemesis and the creators. Like, what are we doing for the creators in, in return of having them represent us as a brand? And I think that personal connection of saying, hey, like, I actually value not as just a content creator, but as an actual person. Like, I value your personal wants and needs. And, like, I want to do those nice things for you. You know, I'm, I'm hoping, and I, I'm not saying this is 100% going to happen in 2023, but I'm trying to lay the groundwork to where, like, hey, when it's your birthday, you know, a gift is getting sent to you from nemesis like when it's uh, a special event like or you win an award or you're like you're up for something you know of note like we're or you hit a milestone like i want that to there to be a way for us to to recognize you for that um more than like i said more than just like social media post and stuff like that like i want it to be an actual hey look we're like a family and when there's something important that happens to you like i want us to like share that experience and i want us to you know congratulate you in a way that's meaningful you know so that's that's, so that's my that's my goal is to have our pro members um where we're we're doing more for them and in return they're working more closely with us on collaboration on content on um, a lot of different things but saying hey like we're gonna do what we can to help you further your brand and like you know take care of you and in return you know, hopefully you're helping collaborate with us on content and building our community out and, and yeah. stuff like that. So, and like I said, just being completely transparent since the pandemic, the last couple of years, we haven't done a good job of that. We haven't been consistent and there's a lot of things that we let slip through the cracks. So uh, I want to fix all of that and kind of start fresh, but build the foundation where the expectation starts there. Like, Hey, we're not we're not going to announce a creator until a b and c is taken care of like hey do we have a care package sent to their house have we already taken photos with the apparel have we already done an interview and an article prepared on our website to go you know go from draft to publish at this time and if we don't have all those boxes checked then we don't announce it yet um and then have you know a uh, kind of a uh, i'm hoping that we can also contract all of our influencers in that way to where we're both held to, uh, I would say a minimal set of standards, right? Like, cause 
we want to make sure that we're being represented in a professional manner, but I also want to make sure that we're holding up our end of the bargain because for the streamer to be representing us like just, you know, freely, like we have to be doing something in return. And so I want to make sure that's in writing and legitimate to where we're also being held accountable for our shortcomings. Yeah, that's really amazing. You know, uh, having that accountability on both sides is a good way to build some trust. And, uh, you know, it's uh, it's very easy to feel forgotten when you're doing things uh, for free, for sure. But I think that what we benefit a lot from in Nemesis is that when we do work together, when we create these shows, when we create these community events, it is a good showing and a start to us being able to do something really, really beautiful. And I think there should be a benefit in itself of that, you know, just uh, getting I agree with that. To a certain extent, but I will say um, very transparently that the the goal for the Twitch channel is to once we start uh, kind of having consistent content across the board and as we're getting ad revenue and as we're getting subs and donations is to spread that um, the revenue across the creators that are on the channel. Okay. So, yeah, well, right now it's like, hey, we're doing this trying to build up the brand. But eventually, as we become profitable, I'm wanting to line the influencers' pockets with those <laughs> revenue because I think that we're building something of value. And eventually, it'll click and we'll start getting subs and we'll start getting donations and we'll build that consistency and we'll get that ad revenue and we'll get sponsors that are maybe chipping in money towards our influencers to produce said content. And at that level, you know, hopefully, my hope is every month to be cutting a check to our influencers from the Twitch channel too. Oh, on YouTube as well, but I'm just saying Twitch for now because that's the the main focus. That's but. that's really awesome. You know, you don't really uh, get this kind of detail, everyone watching, on you know what an organization tries to do for their creators. So definitely listen up. Definitely uh, come back to and check out the VOD for all this information too. It's really real essential moving forward. While there still is a restructure, as uh, Maz has said, there's still a lot of changes coming and things that he's not been able to talk about. Yeah, we want to make things profitable and sustainable. Um, yeah. And part of that is how do we get to a point where we can not only pay the influencers that are under Nemesis, but how can we pay the staff uh, and maintain our operations long term, but also scale those operations. And so that's kind of why we're restructuring some things to be, hey, we have to invest in our creators. Um, and in return, you know, they'll take care of us in the ways that we need, which is promotion, you know, maybe some brand loyalty um, and collaborating with us on content <laughs> for YouTube and social media and TikTok and stuff like that. So if we're doing what we can to take care of those creators, I think it's going to pay off in spades because they're going to want to participate more with us on other things because they feel valued and that we actually care because we do. We just haven't done a great job of showing that. <laughs> so yeah and i know the i know it's tough all the way around since the pandemic it's it's really changed the way ad revenue comes in for channels it's expanded the pool of content creators so where we once probably had a really nice uh, market for ourselves ten thousand other people are doing the same thing now so it's it's nice to see yeah the that, work the work from home thing really blew up the yeah. last two years and it's good to see that you're you're still wanting to adapt and do these things and bring your vision to life, especially with uh, all the staff that you got going so far. And I just want to say that as a creator, getting to do this show and talking to the audience on this is that it's worth the sacrifice when you're asked to do a collaboration. You know, yes, you may be giving up uh, you know a little bit of time on your channel. You may be uh, doing something like that, but. You know, being on this channel, being here, I can tell you it's a hundred percent worth it to take that hour out of my my week or two hours now that I'm trying to work with another thing here. But the beautiful thing is, is that there are so many benefits and results to that and getting to collaborate with you all is just an absolute pleasure. And you can benefit in some of those ways too if you just, you know definitely take that chance and consider it. And when you get the call to action, step up, it's fun, you know, and you just never know where it's going to lead. That's just me talking to the viewers and, and, you know, giving my little testimonial to, to how worth it it's been for me so far. Yeah. And you've been a workhorse. I, I mean, we really couldn't have done a lot of the content that we have without you. So 
I really appreciate you. Uh, you've really kind of shown uh, kind of the epitome of what, what Nemesis is about is finding uh, content creators that are looking to do something a little more um, than just stream um, and kind of like make a, a name for themselves, even within a, a different brand in, in some cases. Well, I think that's what makes Nemesis unique is because I've talked about it with other creators on the show, and I don't know if you've been around a lot for it, but I've honestly praised how well you are and attentive you are to everyone's needs. Like, I don't know how we came about to like saying, hey, let's do a show together. But like you took time out of your busy schedule to figure out maybe my strengths. Maybe maybe I didn't realize it at the time that you were just trying to figure out, you know, where I could thrive. But we got to this point because you put in that work and, you know, it's not every day an organization, especially someone who owns the organization, goes down and talks to people one by one, if possible, and tries to figure out their strengths, figure out, you know, how it can benefit the channel, but also benefit them. It's not like a one way street. And that's just been so beautiful. Yeah. And I think that's lost in, in just a lot of business in general. Right. And that's why they're like, you, they have these all support local and, you know, mom and pop shops and stuff like that is because that's lost a lot in the corporate world. And, and a lot of companies is that you don't view your employees as equals, right? Like where, why is that gone away? Like, when I when I view Nemesis, I don't view. It, yes, I started Nemesis, but I don't view it as where you know uh, everybody's just a cog in a machine. Um, saying hey, there's ind individual creators. They all want different things, and how can we highlight them and put them in a situation where they can be successful? Because uh, if they're successful, we're also going to be successful just by default. Um, so it's putting them in those situations where they can thrive that's going to make us successful. And long term, like I said, I want to have that more personal one-on-one -on -one con connection with all of our creators to where, you know, we're a family, like essentially where, hey, hey, how are you doing? This and this and this. And, you know, we're constantly, I know we did those surveys recently, but actually use that information to make decisions going forward because say, hey, Half of our creators want to work with this brand, so what are we doing? Let's get let's get into talks with this brand. Well, half of our creators really are looking forward to this upcoming game. Well, let's try to get game codes, or maybe we can even get physical copies, which would be even better. So, like using that information and doing something with it. Um, so that's why that's why I went about doing those couple surveys to get more information, gather, hey, what is it that you're looking for? What are you looking for from Nemesis to be better at? Like, how can we improve and what can we do to provide value for our creators? So it's a slow burn. That stuff's not going to happen overnight, sometimes not even within months, right? Like we have to build the right networks. We have to get in talks with the right people to make some of those things happen. Um, but it's not lost on us. We are compiling this information and we are listening and we are getting with each of our creators as we can to try to facilitate those things and figure out uh, what it is that you guys are looking for. That's beautiful. And uh, I want to break a little bit of, uh, of the, the, the curtain, if you will. I want to bring it down just a little bit and just ask you when, and for the viewers out there, pay attention to this. When does your job stop? at nemesis it doesn't um <laughs> i will say that i'm involved in everything in nemesis uh, everything um there's not something at nemesis that happens without me having a hand in it um there's really only a handful of us that are really working at nemesis james is one of them but um j like legitimately we have less than 10 staff members and i say staff lightly because some of our creators um, are also staff and some of our staff are also creators and the ones that aren't creators are usually doing a lot of work behind the scenes that don't they don't get credit for so um but it's a very small team so something that we definitely plan to expand going forward but because we're working with kind of bare bones <laughs> staff right now um but it's fun. Like it's exciting. Um, I do want to offload some of the tasks that we're doing to new people. 
that are capable. <laughs> so <laughs> we're already doing some of the, some of those things are already happening. Um, but I think until you get um, to where you want to be in each facet of the business, um, you kind of want to have your hand on it, right? Because you kind of want to make sure that nothing's slipping through the cracks and um, that things are being done the way that they need to be done. But you also can't have the problem of having too much oversight to where things are dragging or they're not happening in a timely manner. And I'm very guilty of that sometimes where I think that I'm capable of doing all things myself and it's not realistic. So you're constantly trying to balance that. Okay, what can I realistically do myself? What should I hand off to somebody else? Yeah. So, and then in between that, the finer points of, Am I handing it off to somebody that's capable of doing it the way that I want to do it? Because if they're not, I'm better off doing it. <laughs> so, <laughs> because that's a constant battle too. So it's like, if you're going to have to go back and redo what somebody else did, then you shouldn't have handed it off to them in the first place. So there's a lot of that. Yeah. So you do a lot of the vetting process. You do a lot of the coordination of all the programs, future events, all the changes coming up. It just never ends for you. But I want to point out that you have said it's fun. <laughs> like you don't it's fun. hear that It's much. exciting. It's exciting, but um, I'm in, I'm very – it's weird because I'm super patient in life and just in general with work, with people. I'm extremely patient, okay? When it comes with Nemesis, like I want things to happen so much faster than they can possibly happen. Like when I talk about I want to expand into MMOs or RPG or House Nemesis or this or this, like when I say that, I want that stuff to happen today. <laughs> you know what I mean? <laughs> and so it's hard for me to like slow down. This is going to take, you know, time to build. But I'm so excited and passionate about it that I want it to be immediate. Like I'm like, man, I want, you know, it'll be, let's say it's six in the morning and I just made a cup of coffee and I'm like, Man, I got to talk to this person, this person, this person, this person to push this project through today. Well, none of these people are awake right now. But in my brain, man, why aren't they responding to me? Like, <laughs> I want to get this done right now. It's like, it's six in the morning, man. Like, nobody's awake. <laughs> this is something that's going to take months. I just need to be patient. But it's hard to be patient about something that you're so passionate about. Yeah. And I can at least say for my end of things, uh, seeing you work with uh, the Nemesis Insider Show and how we coordinate it and we try to figure out different ways to push forward content, get guests and all this different stuff. It's actually just really amazing that you say you're patient, you are just so darn chill. And then like you can come in with like just a snap of a finger and, and have like a great idea too. And it just helps uh, get that workflow better. But even like if things aren't necessarily coming together, y'all just don't know. Like, He's like right there still, just like, we'll figure it out. <laughs> well, I've always been the idea guy, right? It, and that's always been my crux because it doesn't, even though you're the idea guy, it doesn't always mean that you're the right person to execute it, right? So I can have this brilliant idea. Hey, we should do Nemesis Insider. We should do this and this and this. It doesn't mean that I have to be the producer or the host. I Sometimes you're just the idea guy. <laughs> <laughs> and that's okay you have to put the right people in place sometimes and sometimes you're not the right person so surrounding yourself with talented people and knowing where to place them and where they're going to thrive is just as important as your skill set beautiful and clue gaming thank you for subbing to our channel here this is so beautiful to to have that kind of belief especially after uh seeing all the shenanigans we get up to here it's really beautiful please uh post those around enjoy those emotes we we have so much great content that we're working on day in day out we're always trying to figure I, out i just came out, out i just came up with an idea since we're talking about nemi oh, okay so i'm gonna post a poll really quickly here oh and i'm not gonna it. tell you what it is until i post the poll <laughs> so hold on a second, because I actually met with an outside consultant about Nemesis because I'm really serious. I take it serious about how we want to uh, make things in the future. And uh, they told me that we should do this and I'm on the fence about it, but Ooh. I want to see what other people say. Okay. Okay. We got a poll in chat coming up y'all. So be ready to vote. 
some fun stuff is going to be uh, happening here. Let's see here. Nemesis members have some of the best emotes on Twitch. Facts. <laughs> yeah, yeah. A lot of our members do have some really diverse and fun emotes, and it's always good to see, you know, all of us have these. Some of them are almost like-minded, and, you know, we do have some creators that collaborate with the same artist, so it's beautiful to have that as well. You know, speaking of that, Maz, while you're setting up that poll, uh, do we have in-house designers resources for streamers to utilize uh we do we do um we do have a lot of uh, design stuff in a google drive for people to use and we do have designers that we work with off and on now designers have been hard to keep consistently because a lot of them uh for good reason they get uh really good at their craft and then they move on to greener pastures as they start their own business or whatever um, so it's kind of a revolving door when it comes to designers, but we definitely have some designers that we still work with from time to time um, that will give Nemesis uh, creators better pricing. So if there's anybody that needs something like that, they can always reach out to us and we'll put them in touch with those people that we're currently working with. Oh so. my God. And the poll is up y'all. Oh, look at that. We got two votes. We got three votes in already. Uh, in the poll, for those that, that may not be looking right away, is should we turn Nimi, a.k.a. the Nemesis logo, into plushies? Now that is fun. I'm going to cast my vote there, too. So definitely make sure y'all <laughs> keep casting them votes in. We're going to have to throw this to Twitter, to be honest. That way, Yeah, uh, we probably will, because we, we actually had somebody, um, the, the consultant that said, if you turn this logo into this, like I'd be buying the hell out of this. So <laughs> I was like, hmm. But I don't know if it would cheapen the brand a little bit, right? We're going for like that badass, like, you know, we're your nemesis type thing. Like we're going to kick your ass at every game. Uh, so I don't know if making plushies will kind of make the brand too cute <laughs> and take away from that competitive nature. I don't no. know. Well, so think about a, it like this. Something to think about. We, we have a cute character as, as it is. He, he's, he's pretty cute. Yes, he does look badass, <laughs> right? But... He's pretty cute, and like having a plushie of one someone that beats the crap out of you like that in gaming, you know, like I'd love a Nimi plushie. That that would be amazing. Also, Vengeance Gaming, thank you so much for the tier one sub. Vengeance says, "Happy birthday, Maz. Wish I wasn't stuck at work in a bunch of hardy moats." Appreciate it. Well, do me a birthday present and trade your truck in for something more feasible. <laughs> <laughs> <clears throat> and Dan says, sometimes you need cutesy stuff with your seriousness. So, you know, coming from uh, a little bit of our uh, community team there, they, they do like the idea of plushies and something of a relatable brand item. You know, it's nice to have a T-shirt, right? It's nice to have a hat, but a lot of people collect plushies. They collect vinyl figures, different stuff like that. I mean, you know, we... Uh, we definitely got a market here. It looks like, especially with everyone uh, saying, "Give I'll me." I'll get you a, a. I'll give you a Nemi neck pillow to wear in your new car. <laughs> <laughs> See, he, he's he's going to consider that really hard. He's going to start looking on car. Uh, what, Carvana? Yeah, he's going to start looking on Carvana. Hmm. Yeah. See, he's already thinking about it. <laughs> yeah. I like that. So this uh, this consultant is is throwing some pretty interesting ideas your way huh yeah they threw some decent ideas it kind of got me to look at it from a different angle different aspect of like how we can be catering to different tar target demographics not just the competitive side and the influencer side but like hey looking at it from you know if, if i'm somebody let's say i'm somebody that's not even interested in gaming yeah. and i run across your brand um you know, would I buy any of your stuff? And if it's just jerseys and competitive stuff, no, I wouldn't buy it. But if you have cute stuff or you have gym apparel or you have something else that I might be interested in, I might buy it. Awesome. I'll, I'll throw one thing out there like Tea Turtle. I don't know if you guys are familiar with Tea Turtle. I'm not. I ran across this brand called Tea Turtle. Love their designs. Um, so I'll buy stuff from them even though some of the stuff I'm not even interested in, but I just love the designs. So, uh, and I just ran across it like on a Facebook ad or something. But so if Nemesis pops up on somebody's Facebook ad and it's just like Nemesis jerseys or something with a Nemesis logo, 
are they going to buy it? Probably not. But if we have some cute plush, even if they don't know anything about Nemesis and they just think the plushie's cute, they'll <laughs> probably buy the plushie. You know what I mean? So Yeah. So it's a little bit of just making the Nemesis name known in different aspects more so than just the gaming. And, you know, like like it's been said, and a lot of people have actually agreed before because I've I've talked to them about the Nemi emotes. And they said, yeah, that would be an adorable plushie. <laughs> so, you know, uh, I think if we throw this to Twitter, people are really going to gonna be involved in that. They're going to like that. We're going to throw it on. The we'll have to run too. that through our, our PR first. <laughs> <laughs> well, no, we're trying to. So I'm guilty of this. I'm, I mean, I'll be honest. So I'm, we're trying to filter more things because there's a lot of times I'm excited about a project and um, I want to share details about it before it's fully flushed out. And that's not fair to the team uh, and the staff at Nemesis either because you guys will get excited about something that may be a long time coming, right? So that that might not happen for a while. And then the same token, like, we have to prepare on the back end for the staff to be ready for those things to go smoothly in the way that we plan. So um, when I say I'm going to talk to PR, I'm actually serious this time is like, <laughs> cause like we, we do need to talk about it as a group behind the scenes and fully flesh out all of our projects uh, going forward before I'm just like excited and say, Hey, we're going to do this. Yeah. Because I don't want us to undersell and, you know, not meet, meet those deadlines. And I don't want to disappoint people that are waiting for something uh, that might be far off. Yeah, that's totally fair. And, you know, for those who don't understand the organizational parts of what it goes into this team, that's a lot of talks. That's a lot of back and forth of ideas. Uh I don't want to say confrontation. <laughs> a lot of the Homer choking Bart. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so, sometimes you just got to get it out, and then it, it, it gets to a point of like, okay, we're, we're out of the blue sky phase on this, and is this viable? And it, it turns into really good constructive conversation, and you know, it's always nice to have those different voices you know, in the kitchen just telling you how – you know this is actually going to go about so it's that's really really cool and uh we've ran an hour now is there is there anything you just want to say to our audience um i just want to say that i appreciate you tuning in to not only our channel but supporting our content creator creators because i noticed a lot of the overflow and the overlap from the twitch channel is from our creators and our community um so you know, more than likely, if they're in this chat, they're probably in another chat for one of our influencers. And I appreciate that on both sides, uh, supporting our brand, but also supporting the creators within the brand. And if you know anybody that's passionate about gaming, esports, you know, influencer stuff, content, streaming, send them our way. I'm sure there's a way that we can work with them, collaborate with them, whether that's just being on our community team, maybe they want to help for staff. Maybe they just want to be part of the community or Discord or whatever. Uh, we're very welcoming. We're very diverse. We're very inclusive. Um, and we want to be kind of a family friendly, family type environment uh, for everybody. Uh, long term, we want to kind of be the go to organization for anything, like any gaming, any, you know, anything that you can think of. I kind of want to branch out into other things outside of gaming eventually but like i said can't share any details on that <laughs> stuff because i'm i'm gonna they're gonna be upset with me if i say hey i want to do this and this and this and this <laughs> <laughs> and those might take some time <laughs> but if i have to summarize i would say like i do want us to branch out eventually into you know fitness stuff and like you know other things that are not just gaming like we have ties with mma like you know instill uh, former MMA fighter, stuff like that. So we have ties to other things. And so I don't think that Nemesis stops with gaming, right? Like, I think we can do other things too, but we have to, we have to do good. We have to be really good at gaming and esports and streaming and content first. And then we can try to go into more of a lifestyle brand if, if we want to. Yeah, that's, that's some really profound stuff. And it sounds like it's going to be, uh, a fun ride to see where those ideas uh, outside of the esports and just gaming content in general goes to, because it'd be really, really fun to 
to see Nemesis become a household brand that does a little bit of uh, everything for entertainment and yeah. Can you imagine like in twenty thirty or twenty thirty where your Nemesis Super Bowl commercial comes up? <laughs> that would be amazing. <laughs> Actually, I probably would never do that because it would cost too much money, <laughs> and I would that would just be waste. Like wait, uh, that spending could be going towards our influencers, so I probably wouldn't do that. But <laughs> just an example, like you're watching something on TV and boom, a Nemesis commercial comes on. That'd be kind of cool. <laughs> it all starts with a Mimi plushie. I'm just saying. Right. I'm just saying. <laughs> all right. So. Even if we made like a cameo inside of a TV show, like a TV show, just like as a spoof, like they did with High on Life, where I don't know if you've seen High on Life or yeah. if you played it yet. No, I haven't. But I was watching Hobbs play it, and there's a part where, like, in within the game, they're they're playing a movie. It was like an old movie with Paul Walker and stuff like that. Rest in peace. But it was showing a movie in the game. You can actually sit there and watch the entire movie in the game. <laughs> but I was just thinking, like, that would be cool if we made, like, a cameo where it's like a like a joke. But it's like you're walking past the monitor in some store in a game. And it's like, buy the, Nemes the Nemi plushie, blah, 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 1999. Or, you know, just like a, <laughs> as a joke. But it'd be kind of cool if that was a real thing. Oh, that would be so much fun. And, and Clue, very ambitious. I know Netflix gives out a lot of uh, money to If anything. we did a Nemesis Netflix show, like, I'm going to be the writer because <laughs> I'm not going to have anybody fire Henry Cavill from my show. <laughs> <All right. laughs> exactly. We, we don't need any more tragedies from Netflix. I mean, like, Henry Cavill is always welcome on the Nemesis show. Okay. He can be a director and producer. We'll be sure to tag him. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, man. So I think we learned a lot, you know, in this hour about Nemesis, uh, where it plans to go, what it's doing now, the benefits that you guys can get now by just participating in community events, by participating in the Discord discussions. Definitely, definitely go to our Discord and check us out and make sure you just uh, become a part of that conversation, learn about your favorite games. Maybe there's a another streamer there that you can collaborate with or maybe you can just be friends with and you know that kind of uh interactivity is what we need and what we have already but you know the more the merrier i'd say for sure on that so definitely definitely hit up that link join if you're not sure about joining a team yet just stick in there talk to us we don't buy it it's all good stuff <laughs> So Maz, uh, before we uh, start wrapping this up properly, let's let's uh, let's let's figure out what's your plans for your future as a streaming personality. Um. Well, if I let some of the cat out of the bag, so um, some people might know this, maybe not. I'm pretty good at some impressions. So some of the stuff that I'm thinking about doing is um, just like clips or videos of me playing a game using impressions and probably multiplayer games with other people like just for example like if it was like Gollum or Smeagol plays Call of Duty or something like that to where I'm doing an impression during the game just to get people's reaction to it um stuff like that would be just fun for me to do but also to create content from so oh that's perfect so um do you have any idea of when we can expect a to see you in the streamer space, like, like I'll probably start streaming again as early as next week. Um, oh, I have fantastic. a, I have to finish setting up my stream deck. I've been procrastinating a little bit. <laughs> I kind of have the the bones of it set up, but I still have to do the finer details uh, of the stream deck. Um, but yeah, probably as early as next week. Fantastic, and you know, hopefully, uh, let's see here if I can get you a shout out in the chat for that. Are you not in the chat? It says you're not in the chat. I can't believe it. I'm I'm watching under the Nemesis account. Oh, right. okay, okay. Um, I can join the chat from my phone real quick. <laughs> yeah, and also this gives us a chance to uh, check out this list of excellent streamers on uh, the Nemesis GG official stream team channel, which y'all should check out uh, nightly for amazing. All right, there we go. Creators. I'm in the chat. And uh, yeah, there we go. I didn't know if it had the added. Okay, there we go. There we go. Please follow his channel. Expect some uh, 
amazing impersonations and content uh, coming up from Maz as he's uh, going through that. The Stream Deck is a very involved project and it never stops. And then you start seeing something that makes your head hurt and then you have to find a new icon for that. And it just rabbit holes. <laughs> Yeah, that is, I kind of already done that. I've already kind of got to that phase where I'm like, hmm, I'm trying to figure out how to do this. And I want it to be very complex. And I'm like, maybe I should simplify it. But no, I want it to do exactly this. And so, yeah, it's, yeah. it's fun, though. It's kind of cool to press a button and it just does a bunch of things. That's kind of cool. All right, man. So, uh, you know, we'll, we'll say our goodbyes here in just a moment. But is there anybody... Uh... As, as as the birthday feller that you'd like to to pick to send our our wonderful audience to ah let me see who is online i see some That's really great question. names but since it's your birthday i, I feel like you should have the honor of, of picking i this. appreciate that let me see let me see back to twitch let me see who's online hmm Trying to see if there's somebody that maybe is randomly on today that's not usually on. Yeah, I like going that route too sometimes, just seeing a fresh face. Like, ooh, okay, let's let's go see them there. Yeah, you know what? I think let's see. I'm try I'm gonna look at our community team real quick. So oh, let me, that's beautiful. Let me see if anybody on our community team is rocking right now. Let me see. Uh, and everybody in chat thank you again for being here for this birthday special if you haven't definitely revert back to the vod for some great information about the organization and some of the changes coming up but also, what you can do as a content creator, if you want to get noticed, if you want to figure out how you can contribute to the team, it's all here. It's all laid out. Everything's approachable in content, and we're all approachable in Discord, so definitely tag one of us and just start a conversation. That's that's the best way you're going to figure out, you know, where you can fit in at Nemesis. You collaborate, you ask. You know, when you don't ask, that's that's where we all suffer. So definitely come in. We don't buy it. I figured it out. Uh, I deftest violator. Oh man, I like this guy. I like this guy. He is all hype. He is so fun. Oh, and he's doing Apex Legends. All right, so we'll get that raid started for y'all after we say our goodbyes here. Definitely come back for some more Nemesis Insider next week. We have another great guest coming up. We're gonna restructure the content on that and try to get more people on as well. So definitely send them dms to me uh, tag me in the nemesis uh, insider channel on discord so we can figure out what we can do um but yeah that's the that's the best way to get that started i'm excited for what uh nemesis insider what nemesis as a whole has coming up and uh monday definitely come back 6 p.m central 7 p.m eastern for that beyond nemesis goodness where we have some gaming news related content sometimes it's about streamer culture there's a little bit of something in the entertainment sphere that we discuss so it's real fun and uh there's a great staff for that as well but um until then definitely uh want to say thank you again to maz for uh one making this all possible two coming on the show and allowing me to do my thing and uh get better at it so thank you so much i only have one bone to pick with you james uh oh why don't you tell me guitar strings are a pain in the ass <laughs> uh, i i i let some information slip y'all that was that was definitely uh my fault <laughs>